Atsi so hello, I'm Maya Grace in case you don't know, and today we're going to be talking about a 19 teens sewing pattern. This pattern by Wearing History is based off of an extant garment, which means it only comes in one size. My roommate and I both made it and we both had to make very different adjustments. So that was a really fun process to get to see happen. But we're talking about mine right now. And I had a pretty good time with this pattern. Um, I did have to remove like four inches, do a little bit of shaping. This project is the first in a series where I'll be putting together a 1910s kit for an event where we're gonna be looking at a bunch of old cars and I will be vlogging that of course. So stay tuned for that. You know where the little button to do that is. That's enough of intro Maya. Let's get into the, the Maya you all came to see. Sewing Maya. For this project, I really wanted to use some fancier materials, and so I used this scrap piece of silk that my roommate had laying around. Originally, it had been for an historically accurate gown that she had made. She needed some piping, so she cut bias strips out of it, leaving some really interesting shapes behind, but I was able to cut out all of the pieces that I need, and there was even some left over, and I don't know what I'll do with that. But after cutting out the front and the back on fold, I was ready to get started with deciding on what I would do for the straps and the lace. For the straps, I decided that I would use gross grain ribbon in this nice pretty black and I was going to attach some lace to the sides. Now I have been wanting to do some fancy lace work, like some really nice applique for a really long time and this project really satiated my appetite both because it was a very fiddly long process and because the end results did turn out really nice if I do say so myself. But what you see me doing here is cutting out as much of the lace as I can to create space so that the lace can stretch out a little bit more and I can shape it to the edge of the fabric without creating any wiggly bits or bubbles. I want it to be as flat as possible whenever I sew it down. I did consider using some spray basting, but I do have a ton of cats and I was worried about their hair getting caught in it, so I decided to just pin really, really well. Here I have my back piece all pinned together, and I'm planning out my path that I'm going to take on my zigzag machine. So I just put this through my sewing machine using the slowest speed that I could, a very small stitch and a very narrow zigzag, so I had tiny little stitches and I went all the way along the top and bottom edge of my lace. Next it was French seam time. I always like to roll up the free edges of anything that I'm sewing so that they don't get caught underneath and ruin my seam. I have had that happen before and it's always so annoying. Other than that, it was just basic French seam construction. One pass, pretty sides out. Second pass, pretty sides in. Make sure to trim in between. Do a lot of ironing so it looks nice. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Also, a benefit of French seams is that they feel really nice against your skin. I barely even notice that the seam is there if it's Frenched. The front placket gave me a little bit of trouble because I literally was about to sew it down on the machine with it folded and then pleated, and then I realized that you needed to pleat and then fold it, and the fold would hold in the pleats. Ah. This wasn't the intuitive way to do it, but it winds up being really sturdy and professional looking, so I'm glad it's what I did. And for the little straps, I sewed some pretty ribbon to one side of it. Just a nice careful stitch. And this is the same ribbon that will eventually go along the bottom of the bra. I decided to serge the bottom edge of my bra before I attached any lace and things to it. Just because I really didn't want it to fray. I want this baby to last forever. Then I attached my lace with the lace facing upwards towards the bra because it will be ironed so that the lace is then sticking downward. And when I tried it on after this step, it was really baggy along the bottom because I forgot that the bottom lace was supposed to be a beading lace, so I wound up adding a channel to the bottom. This would provide some cinch to it the same way that beading lace would, but it wouldn't be visible. It would be kept inside just like a sweatpant. This also would give me a nice pretty ribbon to tie in the front, which I was really looking forward to. I even lucked out and I found some 100% silk ribbon in a nice pretty cream color in my stash, which was super exciting. Significantly less exciting was installing the fiddly little hook and eyes. This was the worst part of the entire process. I kind of wish that I had used hook and eye tape because it would have been so much faster, but also it would not have looked as cool or as accurate. Mm, I have mixed feelings about it. 
I do know that eventually I'm going to go back and redo the one that I'm sewing on right now with a cream thread instead of a black thread because it does show a little bit from the outside and I don't love that, but that is a problem for another day. And after I finished up with the hook and eyes, I just needed to attach my straps and do some very careful measurements with those so that they would lay correctly on my body. But before I show you the final reveal, I did make a quick little panty to match the bra. I used some of the scrap lace that I had laying around. I used a pair of panties that I have that fit me really well to clone the pattern. And I made sure to use this little 100% cotton scrap for the crotch gusset, just so that I wouldn't have like raw silk right on my punini. And right around here is where all of my attitudes towards the serger changed because I used this serger for so many things on this panty. I finished both of the leg holes with it. I went over every single edge with it so that they wouldn't fray. And then I attached my lace directly over top of that so that you wouldn't see the serger strings. But the serger is what's holding this thing together. Now what you see me doing here is folding over the edge of my fabric so that I can stitch it down and have a nice finished looking edge from the outside. And just like I said before, here is the lace that I'm attaching. The lace is a little bit stretchy, so I have it pulled taut as I'm attaching it to the fabric. Because this fabric doesn't stretch very much, I need a little bit more of it to fit over my booty. And then the lace is going to hold it tight to my body, so I want that to be a little bit tighter on me. Just to keep everything upright and from falling off of my body. Repeat this process for the front of the panty, and then fold over the raw top edge and stitch that down, and we are done. And here is an aesthetic flat lay of the finished panty, because I am not going to model it. But I'm really proud of it. Now here is where I get completely sidetracked. Before I started this project, I had to do a little mock-up. And the mock-up fabric that I used was actually kind of cute. So then I was looking at the mock-up and I was thinking, what if I drafted some little bloomer shorts to go with it and I actually finished the fit test that I made? What if I actually finished it and made like a cute little sleeper set? Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, it would be awesome. So that's why I did it. It's very quick, dirty construction. There is nothing about this pretending to be historic or even coherent. You can even see me here folding this edge to make it meet the scrap lace that I used to finish everything off. And whenever I put everything together, I didn't bother with making little drawstring channels. No, no, no. I used braided elastic like a goblin. Now I needed a way to attach everything to my body and also finish the shorts. So what I wound up doing was taking some scrap ribbon that I found in my stash and cutting it into little pieces that I could tie. These would become my shoulder straps and a little tie front. And of course, to finish off the bloomers, I had to add a cute little bow to the front. And to finish off the top edge of my bra, I attached this cute little lace trim. This is the same lace trim that finishes the bottom edge of both of the bloomer leg holes. And I attached the lace trim and the pretty little satin ribbon straps to the top edge of the bra in one fell swoop. It was very easy, very convenient, and super satisfying. Then I used two little ties and I attached them to the front. So there would be two bows that I would tie that would hold the top on. It's not a way to close a garment that I've seen before, but it works. And I think it looks like something that like one of those really cool zero waste like indie fashion companies would do, so I'm really happy with it. What you see me doing right now is called stay stitching. I'm just stitching the raw edge of the seam allowance down so that my lace sits up straight, and I use that to travel to the other edge of my bra to then stitch on the other two ribbons and finish it. And here she is in all of her glory. Once again, I did not feel super comfortable putting this on my body to model it. Um, it looks a little funky on the mannequin, but it is super cute and I'm very happy with it but I am so much happier with this bra. It's a little like frumpy shaped compared to a modern bra. It doesn't like uplift or like smooth me out as much as I'm used to, but it is so cute. And I definitely think that I achieved the silhouette for the era. Thank you, Modeling Maya. I'm putting together a 1910s outfit and this is the first of the series. We're going from the skin outward. So we've got a couple other little fun projects on the way. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and as always, 
give this video a like if you liked it so more awesome people like you can see it. And if you want more alternative fashion patterns, you can click the link down below where I have my Kofi, and that's where I both host the patterns and where you can pay me to make more. Anyway, that's all I got. Bye, friends. Grandmama, it's me, Anastasia. <laughs> I don't know if I did the voice right. I feel like weird. Like, how do you show off a bra without being like, boobs? I think you just lean into the boobs. My ch <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I got the giggles of that. <laughs> Froze like fucking Sasquatch. It was like full raccoon mode. <laughs> oh, there's a spider. Oh no. I think he's dead. I guess we have to burn the house down. Whole house down. Gotta go. Mm -hmm. That's not my intro. <laughs> Welcome to Opus Illinois. Wait. <laughs> Who am I? Okay. So. You're better than Kenya. You at least haven't licked me in the face. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Even for the walls.